Good afternoon, YouTube. This is Los Angeles Prepper here. Uh, before we begin, I think it would be appropriate to have a brief uh, moment of silence for those who have fallen and those affected by the tragic events in Las Vegas recently. Thank you. Um, I, I don't know what I can say, um, you know, about such an evil, awful act. Um, it's, it's just, it's beyond comprehension. It's, it's, you know, it's almost surreal um, to just think about that. Uh, Think about the individual who committed the acts. Think about all the people that got hurt, the hundreds, if not thousands of people that are going to be affected by those, you know, who are lost and those who are injured. Um, and, you know, it's such a, it's such an anomaly, even with, you know, the, the, some of the terrible events that we have faced in this country over recent years, it is still sort of in general you know, a really uncommon thing. So I'm, I'm really not going to try, I'm not going to comment on it very much. Um, I don't feel I have a lot of insightful things to say about it, um, to be honest. So um, I'll just leave it at that. As far as, you know, what what you do, or, you know, at least sort of how I feel about um, you know, I think events like this give us perspective on life. Uh, I have, I wrote down gratitude, you know, I'm, I've been going through some little annoying stuff in life personally, and, you know, the perspective of something like this happening, it just, it gives you, uh, reason to pause and think, you know, am I really going through anything that difficult in life right now? Um. Do I have anything to bitch or complain about? Uh, in the grand scheme of things, I really don't. Um, not in the grand scheme of things. Next item I have on the list here is kind of a big one. Um, purpose in life. Let me turn this uh, fan off real quick, just in case you can hear it chattering away. But... Uh, you know, this is something a lot of you probably think about now and again. Um, I've been thinking about it a lot the past few years. I don't know if because I'm getting a little bit older or um, because I've kind of been bouncing between careers and, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I think it's something that until you sort of come to grips with, you... Uh, it can be a big area of uncertainty. And I, even though I feel like I've honed in a little bit on what my own, you know, what I'm taking the meaning of my life to be, um, I still have a ways to go. And, you know, who knows if I ever figure it out um, before I leave the earth. But in regards to, you know, a new perspective or a new frame of reference for how you view your life in the, in the wake of a terrible tragedy, um, You know, it, it really just, on, on some level, gives me motivation to um, just try harder, you know, reach for more, become a better person so that I can, you know, help other people, not just in times of need, but just, you know, in general. Um, I've always felt that the, the better care you take of yourself, the better care you can take of other people. Um, so, so there's that, you know, um, I haven't really, like I said, I haven't really honed in on what my individual purpose is, uh, you know, I have thoughts about starting a family and doing sort of, um, you know, quote unquote, normal or mundane things like that. But 
I definitely want to leave something, you know, leave not just a family, but, you know, leave an impact on this earth, a positive impact, something that will last. Um, I'm not sure how exactly I'm going to do that yet. Um, other than trying to build things, you know, professionally or maybe personally or even in society, you know, build things that will last for the benefit of all of us. Um, next thing on the list I have here is emergency planning. Um, it's, you know, there are a lot of ways to react to recent events. Um, and of course, just like the hurricanes kind of got people thinking about emergency preparedness, um, tragedies like this also um, serve as a very, uh, you know, just awful reminder that uh, part of your contingency plan needs to at least uh, broach the subject of, you know, um, more you know, less likely, but very, very tragic and awful events like this. So it, I'll be honest, it's not something that I personally put a lot of thought into, you know, what I would do in a situation like that. Um, I have, as far as my knowledge, I can only confirm that I've been near um, the public criminal use of a firearm once in my life. I was at a no joke, I was at a KFC Taco Bell and uh, there was someone getting off the bus sort of like 20 or 30 feet away. There's kind of like a five foot wall between the bus stop and the Taco Bell, but somebody got off the bus and for some reason fired a few shots and then sort of ran off. <laughs> um, and I will say that what surprised me most about the incident was how kind of surreal it was. Um, it, I, I was sort of in shock for a couple seconds when it first happened, and then I kind of ducked down next to a counter or something. Um, there were a lot of people who didn't duck or hit the floor. Uh, I don't know if they didn't know it was real or their brain was still processing it or they didn't see anyone else duck. Um, I don't know. But just for what it's worth, don't necessarily expect that, you know, if you haven't been around that type of thing, and I certainly hope that you haven't, don't necessarily expect that your first reaction is going to be, oh, that's a gunshot. I need to get into cover. Um, it's a very, it can be, at least in my own limited experience, a surreal thing. Now, I said one confirmed, you know, I've, um, I've been living in and around the city for a long time. It's certainly possible I've been within earshot of other criminal behavior where people are using firearms, but since I've never, <coughs> you know, in that case, uh, there were witnesses that said, yeah, some guy had a gun. Um, in all the other cases, it, you know, it was just something that happened in my neighborhood or something I was driving by or, you know, who knows what, but nothing that I was, nothing that I was ever able to confirm. So just, you know, put that into part of your planning. Um, I haven't spent a lot of thought on it. I, I certainly don't have any tactical experience to draw upon. Um, so, so yeah. Self-defense, last thing on the list here. Um, you know, in this specific instance, you know, if, if the shooter is on a, I mean, it's really just, it, it sickens you to think of the type of premeditation that might have gone into this. You know, if the shooter being in such an elevated position, even if you're a Navy SEAL, if you're 30 stories down, I'm not sure how effective you're going to be against, maybe a Navy SEAL would be, but you get my point, you know, one, two, 300 yard shot up to the 30th floor, or even to the third floor or the fourth floor, you know, in a different situation. Um, so not not just not just talking about you know carrying firearms although definitely um this is you know in in a way it's kind of a reminder that there is a reason that people get concealed carry permits and a reason that a lot of people feel strongly about the right to bear arms 
um, but you know, most people that are preppers and watching this channel and doing things of a prepping nature have a little bit, I wouldn't say cynical, but kind of more realistic. Like I, one of my subscribers who did a video recently about, you know, people might have bad intentions and shit hits the fan. Um, and it's absolutely true. Uh, the, the difference is, and, and I sort of like liken it to like the wild, wild west. Um, if people are uninhibited from acting upon their impulses, you know, our lives become very much different. So, you know, it's one thing to set up your self-defense and trying to keep yourself safe and having good situational, situational awareness and things like that in a pre WRL situation, but after WROL, it's, you know, to say it's going to be like Mad Max is almost an understatement. You know, there weren't even enough people in Mad Max for it to really get crazy. You know, there was this gang and that gang and, you know, hundreds of thousands of miles of desert, basically uninhabited. It wasn't, it's like Mad Max, except you have 10 million people in LA or, you know, eight or 9 million people in the Bay area, etc. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so I'll leave the video at that. Um, you know, in, in the aftermath of such an awful event, the, you know, the average person like myself tries to find meaning, tries to understand it, tries to emotionally deal with it. And in a lot of ways, it's just too much to process. You just can't even, you just can't process it. You know, I'm an engineer by training or a little bit more training and I will be and always trying to figure stuff out. And, you know, I think sometimes you just can't figure out evil. It's just, uh, it just kind of speaks for itself. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.